Good morning. Welcome to St. George's Anglican Church here in London, Ontario on the second Sunday after Pentecost. We're glad that you have joined us for morning prayer today. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts, and let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. God rules over all the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your ways. Appoint for us, then, a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Just as, the, just as they have done to me from the day I brought them up out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me, and serving other gods, so also are they doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands, and commanders of fifties, and some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers, he will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers. He will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers 
and his courtiers. He will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we may also be like other nations, and that our king may govern us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord. And there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the joy of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly, he perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me, O Lord. You love your enemy, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Let us pray. God of creation and fulfillment, help us to seek and discover your purposes, that we may become willing instruments of your grace, and that all the world may come to love and praise your name in the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain Jesus, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes, who came down from Jerusalem, said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called to them, and he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. 
Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I speak to you this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, today is the first Sunday that we really settled into Trinity Tide, the season of the church, or Sundays after Pentecost, or ordinary time, as it is often called. And today is this first real Sunday. We have done all the major feasts of the church. We have had Easter, the Ascension, Pentecost, and Trinity Sunday last Sunday. And now we settle into this very long season. But this is one of the most wonderful seasons of the church. Because in this season, we are challenged by Jesus' teaching and ministry. We are refined as God's people to hopefully, through the work of the Holy Spirit, to become more and more like him little by little each and every single day for the healing of this world and for us to preach about the kingdom of God. And so we are in this season, and this year we get to go through the Gospel of Mark. And Mark is a wonderful gospel because in the Gospel of Mark, it's all about being a disciple of Jesus, or what does it mean to follow Jesus? And Mark tells us outright, it means to pick up our cross and to follow him. And so during this season of Trinity Tide or Ordinary Time, that is a good project for us as Christians to pray about, think about, wrestle with God. What is our cross to bear in this world and what is God calling us to pick up? And so we enter this long season of the church and I look forward to entering this season with you and being refined with all of you to become more and more like Jesus day by day. And although I love the Gospel of Mark, today I want to look at our Old Testament reading from Samuel. For I think Samuel is one of those prophets in the Old Testament that's still very much relevant to our world today. People as Christians often ask us, how can we read a book that is thousands of years old and think that it is still relevant to our lives and to our world today? And what I tell people is the more things change, the more they stay the same. And what I mean by that is although Samuel lived thousands of years ago, Jesus 2,000 years ago, the world was even different than it is today 10 years ago. But the more things change, the more they stay the same. The context might change, everything around us might change, but we stay the same. The human heart stays the same and our inclinations towards God and one another stays the same. So the scriptures are still as relevant today as they ever have been and they will be in the years and years to come. For we human beings do not change. Our hearts stay the same. And so Samuel has something very important to say to us today. So in our reading from Samuel today, he is with all the elders of Israel. And they ask him, they say, can we have a king like other nations? Up to this point in their history, since God has brought them from the land of Egypt into the promised land, they have been ruled by prophetic judges who God has raised up to lead them. Samuel is one of these judges. But today they ask for a king. They want another system of governance. They want to be like the rest of the world, they say. And so Samuel goes away and he talks to God, for Samuel knows that this is not a good idea. And God says something very interesting to Samuel. He says, Samuel, they are not rejecting you, but they are rejecting me. They are rejecting me from being king over them. But let it happen anyways. God tells him to go back and to anoint a king. And we all know how the story goes. Samuel goes back, he anoints King Saul, and for a little while things go pretty good. But then they fall off the rails. And then King David comes along. And again, things go pretty good. But then things fall off the rails. Solomon comes. Things go pretty good. And then after that, it's all downhill from there, pretty much. But God lets this happen anyways. He lets it happen anyways, even though he knows that this is not going to be a good or fruitful thing for his people, the people of Israel. And I want to read this text today because I think this is a text that we, as the people of God, need to heed. I think this is a text that is prophetic for our own lifetime and is also telling us about the world to come. So what do I mean by this? We, as the church, as God's people, should not always want to be like the world around us. We should think differently. We should act differently. We should govern ourselves differently. We don't always need to look like the world around us. And so when we are discerning, when we are making our decisions, we should always keep that in mind. And this is one of those readings that we should keep at the back of our head. 
the people say, we want to be like the world around us. But it doesn't work out for them. It's not good news. But there is good news in this text. Because ultimately, what this text is about is good news. Good news, it is about God's faithfulness, even though we are unfaithful. And what do I mean by that? The people demand a king, and God knows that this is not going to go well. But God uses this demand to eventually bring about the salvation of the whole world. God uses this human folly to bring about the salvation of the world. What do I mean by this? We know that after King David is king, the good king, the one who follows God, we are told that the Messiah will come from his line. And so God uses this human folly to bring about the incarnation, to bring about Jesus himself into the world, to save us, to ransom us. God uses this human folly, and that is good news for us. And that applies to our world today, these thousands of years later, because it means that there is no thing, person, or situation in this world that God cannot redeem, that God cannot restore, that God cannot heal, because he is good and he is faithful, even when we are not. There is no person in this world that God cannot heal. There is no situation in our own lives that God cannot restore. There is nothing going on in our world that God cannot heal and restore or use to his greater good or greater purpose. Because he is good and he is faithful. And that's what this reading shows us from Samuel today. Is that even when we make a bad choice, even when we are unfaithful, God is still good and God is still faithful. Think about what's happening in our world, in our country, in our communities. There is so much negativity out there. There are so many bad things that have happened. But God is able to redeem us all and to redeem every situation, to heal every situation. If God can take his people being unfaithful, wanting a king, wanting to be like the other nations, and bring about the salvation of the world through it, he can redeem any person, thing, or situation. He can heal everything. There's nothing that God can't touch, and that is good news. That is good news that the world needs to hear. That God is good, merciful, and faithful. That he heals all things and eventually makes all things right. For he is good and he is faithful, even when we choose not to be. And that's just a human reality. We will all have times in our lives where we choose not to be faithful, but God will be faithful anyways, and for that we can give thanks. I also wanted to look at the book of Samuel today on this first Sunday of Trinity Tide, or Ordinary Time, because it's not lost on me that the people are asking for a king. And it should not be lost on us how this season of Trinity Tide comes to an end months and months from now. The last Sunday of this season is Christ the King Sunday, where we celebrate Christ as King of heaven and earth, of all that is, of all creation. The true King that governs us all, our hearts, minds, and souls. So we begin this season today with the people of Israel being unfaithful and asking God for a king to be like all the other nations of the world. And we end this season months from now with Christ the King Sunday. And so there's a lot of ground in between now and then, but everything we hear between now and then will challenge us and refine us. But ultimately, it will also show us that God is good and that God is faithful. And for that, we give thanks this day, that God is good, that God is faithful, that ultimately God is King. And through his kingship, he is merciful and loving, he is good, and he is faithful, and he heals and makes all things right. So let us this day take that good news and put it into our hearts, minds, and souls, and let us leave our homes, our churches, and get out into the world and spread that good news with a world that needs and wants to hear that good news, that God is good and God is faithful. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, the response to the Lord hears our prayer is thanks be to God. Let us pray for the church, the one church of Jesus Christ throughout the world, the church that reaches all the way back through 2,000 years and across the world today. Let us pray for guidance, encouragement, and a genuine awareness of the immense privilege belonging to the people of God. Let us ask God to fill his church with the Holy Spirit that we may be equipped to worship him in the way he deserves. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray for the message of the church. Let us thank God that we have something to say, a message to declare, and good news to announce to the whole world. Let us thank God for Jesus, and that we, because of him and his life, death and resurrection, we have something good to share with our family and friends. Let us ask God for the power of the Spirit to enable us to share his love with those we meet at school, at work, or in the world. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Let us pray for the church as it seeks to respond <clears throat> to the questions and problems of the world. We pray for our church leaders, for our Bishop Todd, our Metropolitan Anne, and Linda, our primate, and for our clergy here in the parish, Aidan, our rector, Dale, our assistant priest. Let us ask for God's wisdom and guidance as they seek to speak in his name before a watching, waiting world. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray for the witness of the church and for its mission to the local community, for our service to those in need of help, care, and support, through our takeout hospitality meals twice a month, our sharing cupboard and food depot. We look forward to a time when we will be able to open our doors to further welcome those to whom we minister. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Let us pray for all indigenous communities and people of Turtle Island, but especially for those who are our Anglican siblings in the Diocese of Huron, the clergy and parishioners of St. Andrews Muncie, Zion Oneida, the Parish of Six Nations, St. John the Baptist Walpole Island, and St. Peter's Moravian Town. Help us as we commit to working with the Indigenous communities to look at the Anglican residential schools, particularly the Mohawk Institute, to shine God's truth-seeking light 
everywhere we can. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Let us pray for our world, giving thanks for the beauty of creation and its rich and varied fruits, for clean water and fresh air, for food and shelter, animals and plants. Forgive us for the times we have taken the earth's resources for granted and wasted what you have given us. Transform our hearts and minds so that we would learn to care and share to touch the earth with gentleness and with love, respecting all living things. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Let us pray for those in need of the hope and joy of the good news we have to share, for those who are lonely and those who are alone, for those whose lives are filled with fear and frustration, for those who are under pressure at home or at work, and for those who, in this prolonged time of the pandemic, feel that they cannot cope any longer. We pray for those we know to be in special need, for those who mourn, especially the family of Irene Walsh, and those listed on our parish prayer list. We pray for ourselves and our need of his power and his Holy Spirit. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us pray that every corner of our lives might be open to the will of Christ, that his love and truth will give us hope and his presence fill us with joy. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And this morning we have one last final special prayer. I told their children I would embarrass them and that's for Joan and Paul Cavers who celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary this past week on June 3rd. And so we, we wish them well as longtime members of this parish, and we give thanks for their witness in their marriage these past 60 years. And we pray that God would bless them and keep them the rest of their days here on earth. Amen. The Collect for this second Sunday of Pentecost. O oh God, you have assured the human family of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.